Uh, He's so stupid. I, yes. I have you. all these bricks that maybe he okay. could just. I don't have to buy the bricks. And right, the, right. Yeah. I'll sit over okay. here. Okay. And stay Let's away. Uh, no, no, that's hey, that was a mom. good. I listened rotate to the tape. I have dual uh, rotation. I can go to the right, left, or to the right. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't. Uh, I couldn't. I, I was just out of it. I still oh. am, but. I, I feel like I'm not doing everything I need to be doing these days. The, mm. the 54 pages. In fact, I'm not. The 52 pages. So maybe I can what is the other way? schedule a talk with you sometime. See what you're doing instead. <laughs> hmm. Nothing. Oh boy. Really, I need one more. I doubt that seriously, that she's doing nothing. Well, I know I'm in my problem, so I guess that is something. Let's but talk about it. You cast it off as though it's nothing. Yeah, I as heard it. As though you've reached that state of emptiness. Right? <laughs> Let's talk about it, Gina. <laughs> Can you take this from Nancy? <laughs> okay, I will. Here's your mail. Ah, oh, good. Board of Psychology. I got something from them. Um, congratulations. Want me to put it in your bag inside? Oh, a dream. Thank you. This is the one I told oh. you. Yeah, 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 please. Oh, wonderful. Oh, dream thanks. Of a dream. Mm -hmm. Ah, to, what is it? Ah, to sleep for a chance to dream. You want one, Jeff? Oh, nice. Yeah. I, I try to make it up because it makes me crazy when the dream, the number of green paper stops before it gets to me. Right. That is so. a little. You, your dream, you can't read it. I have two other ones, but since I know we don't usually deal with three of them, I only brought this one, which is the oldest. The three. You want to hear news about her? News about? Oh, about, you know, since now that the San Onofre nuclear station is t turned off, um, I got a note today that the recreational vehicle park where I have something in storage. Um, Tony, 40 percent of the Southern California Edison Company is going to take over that part to expand their production of energy. Hmm. And so they're telling us that um, oh my God. 40 percent of have to, somebody might Look have to, that, 60 percent of us have to move out as of May 1st. Wow. It's, it's funny because the owners have been there like 40 years. That's a is fine that piece of work. Yeah, yeah. It's a friend of my sister from New Jersey, Tony? Potter. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, Tony and me. You have a recreational bill? No, I'm paying the bill. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's his. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, business as usual, then. You said, never mind. Forget that. that yeah, was this very was just Irvine news mm. and the energy issue. Very, very snarky. So, what do you think, Pierre? What am I going to ask you? <laughs> Let me think. Right? <laughs> what? You... You might ask me if I, it's a success or a failure. You might ask me if there's a block I can see in the dream or a potential problem. Yeah. I think I should add something Good. to the dream, which is because I looked at it first and I went, I'm going to sell a broken down vehicle to some family with children? And then I realized that for me, when the the image in the dream of the vehicle not being in good repair only meant that it was uh, shabby, you know? It was... Can I have a copy? I, I, I lost... I don't think it's I have floor, the right... Oh, there. Thanks. Is this about the RV? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was like... Sorry. Yes, it, that's what it is about. It was like... It's like a um, beat up. Beat up RV. But I don't think that the in good repair had anything to do with its mechanical. It was purely appearance. Go ahead. So, um, and it was quite large in the dream. It was, you know, a little bit like an old Volkswagen van that's rusty. Okay, so. 
anyway, so it's um, but it's but it's big. It's like really tall and really long. It's not as I mean, it's probably twenty feet long. You know, it's not like twenty-four feet long. How long is twenty feet? Uh, it's about as long as from these between these two walls here. So, and it's kind of like old aluminum siding, kind of rumpled. So, um, and so what I remember is that <clears throat> I, I'm going to sell it to a man with a couple of kids. And according to the dream, well, I, and I do remember, and is the fact that, well, I'm kind of wondering if it is in good repair. <clears throat> So now I don't know if that was true or not. Here's a copy of this stream I'm doing if you guys want to. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, there's you the man. Video, you? Hey, Sergio. Uh, yep. uh, Sergio. Right, thank you. Yeah, how's everyone doing? So, um, I'm, I'm what state of mind were you in when you were thinking of selling that RV? Hmm, what a good question. Well, it seems like very much a business. What did I do with my tape recorder? Oh, sorry. Suddenly panic. Um, it seems like I'm in a, um, kind of like, it seems like an open state of mind. I'm focused on selling it. Um, or focused on, it's a good question, hard to describe the state of mind. Um, so it's like a goal to sell it. Um, I'm not real eager or anything. You know, I'm not like, oh boy, oh boy, I'm going to sell it, I'm going to sell it. Not like that. I'm more, um, this is the way it has to be. Why? Kind of Does thing. that answer the question on why would you want to sell it? Oh, I thought you asked me what state of mind. Oh, why I would want to sell it? Um, Hi there, my friend. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. You know, it's very curious that you ask me that because I don't think there's a real need to sell it. It's more like I feel like I'm grown up and I have to sell it. You know, one of those things where you say, oh, I'm a grown up and I have to, I have to do this because I'm a grown up, can't do that. No, I don't know what well, that is. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's okay. I, no, I'm, it's in full realization that it, it very could, much could be a Papalogos kind of state oh, that I say that, oh, okay? Oh. I, it's, I realize that, but I, I can't pull back and go, Oh, it isn't that, just because I think it's a problem. I have to still lay it out, you know? So, um, yeah, it's kind of a regret. You got mm. it. Because... Why don't you tell us about the fact that it has a glow? Well, it's actually the fact that it has this <laughs> it has this backwash, what I call the backwash. But it's like a somehow connected with the RV. It's the fact that it has this <laughs> this well, Lucia like motion. You know, it's like a turning back and when it turns back like that, it glows. I'm not familiar with that <laughs> word, so would you mind telling me what it means in the dream? What Just, glow means in the dream? De describe it. Ah, it, well, it, it's like it turns to a kind of a warm, almost like a lantern light. It's not really bright or hurting your eyes, but it's like a... a everything disappears in like a luminescence but not like bright 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 but a luminescence uh, the effect it had on you in the dream when you saw that in the dream i it totally relaxed me it relaxed you it flowed through me it flowed through and you. like fixed everything yeah. 
you know what I mean? But you know how those flows are? Well, you might not know personally, or I might not know what you want to talk about. But some kinds of experiences, they flow through your being and they like repair everything. Like, it's comparable to where I, I was once at a, in class and I had a Russian Orthodox priest in class. He was only in my class for a couple of days and he wore a long black robe, had a long tall pointy hat. And when he sat down, he just, when he sat down in class, it was like water flowed out from him and went out in a circle. And it was, it, it was like I could see it. It was thick, like six inches deep. And it, I was standing in front of the class, hit my ankles, and went up through my whole body and like relaxed every tension. <clears throat> No ache, no pain, nothing left. So this flow had a similar, you know, erasing of any tension. It's like every tension leaves every yeah, ache a, or pain. It would be uh, rather, every differentiation. Yeah, it's a rather curious RV you're giving up. <laughs> it's a rather curious RV. It's a very curious RV that you're giving up. I know. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm you, knowing when you now. You say it also had that recursive quality of mm -hmm. Lucia, too. What, uh, what did that do to you? Well, that's that's what I meant by this motion. Okay. But what did it do to me? Hmm. Mm. That was the. That's what brought the light. You know, was when it flowed down over. Well, I mean, I, I called it Lucia, but actually, I think it's not a good definition or description. It was a recursive flow yeah. into myself. <clears throat> and down in the, you know, like, like that. Well, so I usually think of Lucia as higher. Yeah. Yeah. You were asking me... Well, I can understand why you have to give it up. Yeah, that's it's, weird, isn't it? No, no, it's a... Well, you want to be an adult. That's a... Yeah, or, yeah, or like something a maturation like, in matur some yeah, very yeah. weird thing. Because that would be a childish kind of thing. Yeah, I, I get it, I get it. It doesn't seem like a childish thing. Oh. Or anything that I should give up. In fact, when I typed this up, I thought, you know... <laughs> I just got out of this. I, I thought, I always wanted to write dialogues a little bit like yours, where you... The people reading it would have, would be brought to, by following the logos, would be brought to a, a nice scene, a nice vision, you know. And I realized I had forgotten it for all these years, that that was an old goal. So when I was typing this up, it kind of brought it back to mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you notice there's no resolution to this. Right. Yeah. I don't sell it. I stay right in that ending state, as far as yeah. I can tell. But I don't want to sell it now. Maybe I'll have a, <laughs> maybe I'll have a dream tomorrow that says, I decided to keep this. <laughs> Go on trips yeah. and have fun. I mean, it does have a Lucia. It, go, it takes us back to the beginning. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's interesting the way you could connect that with a present interest. Yeah. Yeah. That it just kind of floated back. What was I doing? Well, I was, well, I, I, I actually amazed myself and typed up three dreams. I usually like type up one parsimonious, <laughs> but I, then I, I, the other ones I might bring at another time, but I just wanted to bring the one. Yeah. You had three dreams last night? No, no. I had this dream on Tuesday, and then I had a dream on... Sorry, I'm harassing him. Need all. Sorry. And then I had one on Thursday and one on Friday. No, one on Friday and one on Saturday morning. So you connected with a possible way of writing. Yeah, with a particular kind of goal. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep, yep. I've been having some very, I've been reading some very curious things recently. No. Mm. Yes. Mm. I spent you a lot of time. A, with your own private bookstore or something. Yeah, we should maybe inquire what is this curious kind of stuff that she's been, what is this you've been involved in? Well, you know, I, 
I spent some time with Destiny of Man. Oh. I spent quite a lot of time with Destiny of Man. Then I followed that up. That was earlier this week, and then I followed that up with, I'm working on, I'm reading Unfolding Truth right now. So. Uh, is, that, is that one up here? Yes. Hmm. Soon to be published. That's kind of the goal behind the reading. Oh. And so this morning I was typing or something. There's another, is that another dream there? No, I... Two sheets of paper you have? No, no, they're just copies. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Does anybody, because I, I could easily, um, I wonder where they are. Well, they're on my whole home computer, but I don't live very far from here. I don't know what else people have to, they want to talk about. Yeah, it's good. But, I, I, you know, people usually have things they want to We'll still be ready to talk about it when you can I thought I'd, I'd just do one maybe after a Parmenides or something. You know, I thought maybe we could do another one after a Parmenides or something. Do you have it with you? No, but I could go get it. Wow. We'll what do you guys here. think? We'll still be here. Well, do you have anything you want to talk about? Dave, you have anything? I doubt if there's some nothing that somebody doesn't want to talk about. <laughs> um, well, did you guys... But I particularly don't feel... <laughs> Particularly pregnant this morning, but uh, <laughs> did you guys? How can you be pre not particularly <laughs> pregnant? Come on, Julie, you should have been on top of that. Who me? Yeah, he's just saying he's generally inquisitive. No, I, I would agree. I would not disagree. Oh, <laughs> nor would I not disagree. <laughs> here I thought. Here I thought you would. A lot of negatives in there. But we have it. Sergio, what you been doing? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good opening. <laughs> Hi, Sergio. All is well. All is well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I've been just teaching. Just teaching? Just, yeah. Thank well. You. Thank you. Justly teaching. Just teaching <laughs> what? English. English? Yeah. Where? Yeah. What? What is it? English. That's so strange nice. language. English. Yeah. Oh, it sure is. Yeah. What are you discovering? Yeah. Um, well, I have uh, students from all over the world and uh, trying to get them to, you know, understand this language for some that's like super foreign, you know. Um, Are you doing adults or children or what? They're adults. Yeah, they're adults. And, Where are you uh, teaching? It's in Placentia. It's a private school. Just for like English, for like international students. Mm -hmm. What do yeah. they pay you? What's that? What do they pay you? Uh, decent. All right. Good. Yeah. <laughs> decent. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Well, because Good. I mean, I was just, Good. you know, because my school, you know, they hire. I, I, that's what I did for like forty years, and they hire people. But if you get, you might be getting paid more than they do. I think even at the top of their pay scale, they're like forty-four dollars, forty-five dollars. Yeah. An hour? That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's top. And I mean, I think at the bottom they're like 28, entry level 28, 29. But you can get 14, 15 hours up to 20, if they like you, 24 hours. If they kick, kick you under 25, you get benefits. But that doesn't come up very often. Do you have a master's degree or something? You no, know, I actually, uh, after my bachelor's and I did a special program to get certified to teach. The academic scene kind of discouraged me, just like with how much money I was paying, and just like. But you have a certification or something. Yeah, you have a designated. Yeah, ESL, okay, yeah. Yeah. Do you have a designated subject credential? No, nah, just the T, the TESO. Well. Oh, okay. That used to be like nine units over your bachelor's degree. Yeah. But the TESO is a good certificate. Yeah. So. You can teach at UCI. You can teach TESOL. overseas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. this is all in the pragmatic uh, level. <laughs> but let me ask, so are you still like taking... With this foreign language that you have to encounter? With he's teaching a foreign language. Yeah, Super English is a strange language. And he's learning. Yeah. How is it yeah. strange? So, so you, he can, yeah. you can tell us what he's doing, or we could let him tell us what he's doing. He's learning. Yeah, good. What Go is it? Tell us what are you he's still doing? going yeah. every morning with uh, Nabuya? Or still no, no, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't been uh, studying with Nabuya. Uh, for a while, but uh, yeah, the, the the English like one thing that I'm always learning is just like when students wonder like why is it like this? That's always the students is like why is it like this? Yeah, what? Well, give us an example yeah. of what they're hmm. curious about. Like the 
in the present tense, we put the S on only <laughs> he, she, it. <laughs> the I singulars. walk, you walk, Part of the he singulars. walks, yeah. but then all the other ones is just walk. walk and so the student says, why? Why is it only just the he, she, it that we have to throw the S on? And I was like, well, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they combine that with, <laughs> but you have two tables with an S. Yeah. And the rules for S, adding S's are the same, nouns or, or verbs, right? But that is a killer. Because not even the I, the U, singular, has no S, but the he, yeah. she, and it has S. Oh, it's nasty. I agree with you. So That's a terrible They, they stomp me with questions like that, you know? And so... Um, how, how were they with I, the spelling? I recall it a lot. Like, I did a hi history of the English language course, and so... It's a it's a historical thing. Like we did have we did conjugate the verb for every subject before, like in old English and like even like I think Middle English. But now, you know, language is always changing. So now we end up with just having the third person singular. And uh, so I had to think about it for a while. When the student asked me, that's like, okay, well, that's a good question. Let me think about it. And it's a historical reason why. Yeah, why? the fact that they languages tend to lose comple complexity. As they so, change, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We start to shorten things up and try to make it simple. And, and so, did that, uh, yeah. Did, that, did that, having the history of English help you to get beyond some of those questions? Yeah, absolutely. Does it help them? Do you ever do a history presentation? I them? throw in little... I guess you don't have time His, in the curriculum. Historical, you know, little like interesting facts or so, you know, like this list word here, like this this isn't an English word, like this isn't a, this isn't a Germanic word, this is a French word. And you start getting to like, students get curious about that. I ended up uh, doing something notoriously named the pancake speech. Pancake. And, and I would do it like, because I taught an introduction to foreign language class. And I would have to say, well, what's English? Everything else makes sense. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I would explain the history of the English language as a stack of pancakes. Yeah. And I would construct a pack of, stack of pancakes while I was doing it with hot butter and syrup and pancakes and whipped cream and cherry on top and the, the whole thing. <laughs> And then I'd have it sitting there and the kids would be going, ah. And then they'd say, was that the pancake speech? Because they'd all heard about the pancake speech. And I'd say, yeah. Uh, they were hoping for something magnificent. And they didn't realize that it just happened, you know. But uh, I could share that with you sometime if you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, I, so I, I, I'd like to dust it off and run it a couple of times around the, yeah, the track. Yeah, revisit. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's always... You can run through with me. You know, getting stumped by the students, you know, it's like one of those things that's kind of like a daily thing, you know, the students are, why, why, why? Why does it look like that? Why do we do it like that? I'd love to do that class. Yeah, so many, you know, in intricacies and things in language. And, um, so it's, it's so nice. So they expected they would like it to be rational. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they yeah. want it to make sense. They right. Want to, they want to see a nice, beautiful, laid-out system, you know, but unfortunately language is just... If it's changing, uh, to what is it adjusting? I think to uh, the, the way the culture's, you know, moving. <clears throat> but what in culture is it that it's trying to grasp and has Shelf to open. change to match it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, we're responsible for those changes. So it's something that definitely like is related to man and how man is moving through. How, how man is moving, like progressing. You mean if you knew the way in which man was progressing, you might be able to predict the changes in language? Possibly. Huh? Possibly, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so that in teaching English, you have an interest in the destiny of man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> ultimately. Right? Yeah. So which Where, language is going to us? most perfectly match? Yeah. <clears throat> Were you there last night? No. Oh, he, he read the destiny of man. Yeah, okay. uh, Josh was. Yeah. 
I, I see that same thing that you described earlier, that weirdness of somebody who is seized by philosophy. Yeah. Yes. That weirdness. That is weird. <laughs> I have to know this. Why does man progress in this way? And what is it about man which causes everything else to be meaningful? Yeah. I like that question. Yeah. I've had the same question recently. Uh, does Most that assume life. then that the language that best can express philosophy of the, of the destiny of man would be the language that is most interesting to study? What language is that? Um, what a good guy to ask. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not kidding. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, with like with respect to philosophy, some of the concepts that like the Greeks developed, you know, in, in their tradition, the Platonic tradition, um, when that you know gets translated into other languages, you know, there's these you lose some of that. You don't quite capture that in like the... If there's a reversal in culture, there might be a decline in the language? Oh, look here. Are you one of those people that get involved in Greek? Yeah, I'm one of those... What happened, what happened to Attic Greek? Has it continued in the direction it had been involving, or did it drop? It stayed. I think it just stayed. stayed. It stopped. Yeah. It stopped. Why did it stop growing, or changing, or there developing? Were, there, I, I, there was no need. Barbara, you know Barbara Stucker. Yeah, I think oh, I, yeah, oh. I know her. She has a Good she has friend. a theory oh. about the Attic language, the Greek oh. Attic. Yeah. Be, and be interesting yeah, to that about. something happened in the Greek culture that caused its momentum to stop, to stop. halt, and not continue to develop. Maybe you could put a question to her. Yeah. Oh, okay. What caused the Attic Greek to? You know, I don't know specifically about Attic Greek. If anybody does, but what occurred to me when P they speak now? But I was sorry. I didn't wait for someone to jump in. I got but, um, oh yeah, me too. But I was thinking of the difference between Attic Greek and Koine Greek, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So what do you see there? Uh, the differences between those two varieties of Greek is like the common everyday Greek, and that's the Koine. And that's then, the Koine. And then when we look at Attic, it's just like. Right. It's no, no, we want to understand that. Psh, yeah. Psh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, when you look, I think when we look at those two dialects of Greek, um, we can see that the culture in which, uh, the, the culture and the tradition in which Attic was spoken and written uh, was, I think, on a much more higher intellectual level than the Koine. Yeah, but what in what in the language do you see then is missing in the Koine, a higher? What would ex what would be an example of that higher <clears throat> that is missing in the Koine? Um, I think maybe we can start by looking at like the the ideas, the concepts. The ideas. ideas. Yeah. The language, the vocabulary, the vocabulary changes. Yeah. And when you say the ideas, what, what are you looking at? Like, like, Same thing. like ideas. Like no, I meant. Go ahead. Ideas. Uh, which and like, such, such, what, what idea would you point at in Plato or in one of the higher thinkers that is not represented in Koine? Was the just the uh, direction? Uh, that's a very directed question, but that's. Yeah, that's a good, that's a which good. when which when you lose yeah. the language becomes common mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. are there some words that you can recall that I'm trying to yeah think okay of some examples. sure yeah. 
What about the one from the symposium? Well, I just meant I should. Or should I let you simmer with it for a while? Maybe you can help me. Okay. <laughs> a lot of words there. Sure. Have yeah. you heard of the idea of the good? Yeah, absolutely. Is that what you had in mind when you said? Yeah, yeah. See, that's what I thought you had in mind. But when you put concepts, I completely lost it. And my mind became, I hate to say, conceptual. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, the idea. Yeah, the, the idea, idea, right, right? Yeah, that, that's like, you know, that, that was my whole, this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought, see? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know how to get you to cash it out, so to speak. Because when, when you look at um, dialects of a language, we can say Koine and Attic are dialects of Greek. Mm -hmm. uh, the first, one of the first things that changes is, of course, pronunciation vocabulary and then very rarely grammar changes but I think in Attic we can see that when we look at Plato and like Proclus the the, the, the grammar the sentence structures the way they they lay out is is, is such beautifully you know mm -hmm. like constructive that when you study like Greek grammar like they say okay there's this structure in Greek this grammatical structure and let's take a look at who was the, who who was responsible for this. Yeah, you turn to Plato. Like Plato, those are the examples you mm -hmm. you use in the grammar books to explain such like structures and so. Um, but I think yeah, the ideas. Exactly, yeah. both of those, right? That the more elegant, the more elegant, profound yeah. connect connections permitted by language. The examples for them in all the texts and the lexicons are are Plato. Are Platonic. So you know, how does that or, relate to the good? In the symposium. Relate to the good. Well, I mean, how does that translate into Koine versus Attic? The like uh, this, I like the idea of the good um, is is something we find in Attic, but in Koine, the everyday kind of Greek, you know, the common people, that was I think uh, wasn't like available to them. I, I don't, or I don't know how it. I mean, the, they could only go to a good, they couldn't go to the good. That would be why. Right. You're yeah, making, that's a good you're, question. You're making it the Latin problem. problem. Well, and in a sense, I don't think you know, it's the Latin problem. I think it's the cultural problem. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, a, see, it's a cultural. Pierre, the cultural differences. Pierre was yeah. saying the cultural differences. Originally. Yeah, absolutely. Because first, lang language and culture are always, you know, intimately connected, and so when looking at the language, automatically you're already, you know. I'm trying to understand the culture as well. Yeah, like when we want to say somebody's good, we say, man, they're really bad, <laughs> right? Yes. That means, is that what culture does? To yeah, culture? absolutely. Like, you know, like I teach a class on idioms. Like all we do is just like idioms, like right off the bat and like expressions that wow. we're so like comfortable using oh, every good. day. That's a you great class. <laughs> what? It's very difficult to find good idioms. Oh, I've been looking for you. Yeah, yeah. But I love idioms. Yeah. There's a couple. I think I have a couple. I'll look more. So, so, I, I have a premise. And that has to do with, like, you know, like the culture, too. <clears throat> these expressions. And a lot of the idioms that are found in some of these books are old and outdated. And I tell the students, like, you know, don't, don't worry about this expression. It's outdated. This was part of the culture years ago. The culture today would say it like this. Like, the people today mm -hmm. would say it like this. So... Uh, are we moving in a coin a direction? Are we moving in a coin a direction? Or more elegant? Well, all you have to do is look at Thomas Taylor versus the more modern ones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you look at things like the New York Times bestseller list. Oh, this is the voting of the hoi polloi, right? Yeah. The many. Yeah. It's real trash. Yeah. yeah. So that would definitely look very common. Even worse than, than at least, you know, it's, it seems like, don't you ask, have to ask, what subject do they want to talk about, right, in the language? Which is what led to Koine being what it is, I think, that it doesn't have the metaphysics. So it doesn't require a, a way of capturing the metaphysics in language, right? Of capturing the good, the one, because they don't have a good, a one in the 
in the Bible, in the New Testament. Yeah. Right? So that's what we were talking, that's what we were referring to. When, so I'm thinking that, likewise, a lot of the things being produced today, and I can't believe the kind of things that people get published yeah. as a book. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, this is my new book. You hear someone talking on the radio and you go, really? Yeah. And they paid you money to produce this? Really? Now we can say we can do this now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What's how much? Sense? How uh, many of them are influenced by the uh, technology of of texting and computers? Because that texting, I noticed, has changed considerably the way people even think. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just wondering. There's this. What there's this with. whole thing with like, um, like we've developed like these like uh, we kind of shorten things up we abbreviate things in like texting mm -hmm. and so you know this new generation that's growing up with like you know the babies with tablets in their hands you know this kind of generation that we're seeing today you know some people are concerned that their language the way that their language is going to like kind of take them to the way that the language is going to change in their generation is going to be just like getting like some people say like stupider like oh, yeah, but because becoming, what, yeah. what are they being asked to express in their own language? Or if you read a even a description of something written by a, a IT guy, it's not a good description. You can't follow it. Hello. Because he, you know, he's never commuted. He doesn't do it that way. Right? He doesn't do it. He doesn't talk about it the way he writes it. He doesn't write it the way he talks about it. He doesn't talk about it the way he does it. I would bet there are several disjunctions. Although you can make a case and save in their favor if you want to, Jeff. Yes. No pretty awful. But whereas Pierre, if we follow Pierre, whoo, and his dialogues were much more complicated. This he might rent, bring about a, a renovation. What would that be called? A, a return to a oh, A revolution. Pierre. Thank God. It's too close to my nose. <laughs> um, no, I just mean... Well, so if you if you were there last night, then you notice some of the paragraphs require you to really work to understand them. We read a few of them. <laughs> a couple times. Yeah. Well, and that's because Very he nice. has complex characters. You know, that's a change in his writing. I don't know if he made that introduction to you, but in the old days, he would write as if, A, the person answering doesn't understand anything and everything has to be explained, <laughs> and B, that the person who is doing the explaining understands everything and can so explain it to the other person. But I think now both of those qualities of the yeah. personas are no longer happening as I understand it, right? Yeah. There can be some things that the respondent knows better than the person asking. And that's, that's a person asking may have not a complete understanding for whatever reason, oh, right? Yeah. And you don't always assume, he no longer assumes that, the, that he's going to supply everything needed to the person who is reading the reading the dialogue. I tried to persuade him to put in an asterisk and a footnote, but so far, because at the very end where he talks about Lucia, we were talking about the fact that he doesn't unfold Lucia in the in the end of it. But that's, that, and that's because he unfolds it thoroughly in several of his other works. So he's going like, so I said, how about a little asterisk that says, this concept is unfolded in this work, or that work, because that's right. It's pretty key. Yeah. So yeah. it's not. It's it's, it's worthwhile. Okay. Because I read? sent you an email, but yeah. that was a week ago. Yeah. Shall we read? I haven't heard. The idea that texting language is making people less more or less less intelligent or more stupid is definitely more than I that I see in school to some extent. But there's also this ability to like create symbols. Yeah. Like the internet meme is an amazing thing to me because it's actually like language and pictures wrapped up with ideas together, shared. What's a meme? You know, like when you see a picture some, of somebody and they have like a little quote on the picture, yeah. like on the internet, that's a meme. And, um, oh, like a little and, uh, bubble. Or anything, you know, it could be like a picture of the baby that's like, I said I want cookies and milk, or you know, mom said no and I showed her who's boss, and it's just like, some funny, usually some, mm -hmm. some lame thing, mm -hmm. but there's also very meaningful wings. Like that's that could be a, rep a way of representing graphic 
like a graphic symbolic language and so just as much as it could make people stupid mm -hmm. it also has an opportunity to actually elevate their their type of creativity, the creativity on the other hand it sounds like you're going back to pictographs <laughs> which may not be a good direction Josh. <laughs> oh i'm just it's, it's a combination, combination. I'm joking because it's yeah. a different type of language oh yeah you know, like people way. send each other pictures now it's like comics yeah, people send yeah. each other pictures rather than like actual word messages. And uh -huh. Pictures contain an embedded idea in them to some extent. I'm going to run off and get my yeah. dreams and come back. And if the conversation is still going on with great enthusiasm, fine. And if not, I will bring the dreams back. Good. In both cases. I, I have a back. hypothesis about language. I wonder if you, what you think. I notice a lot of students leave off the ED on words. And I've even seen in official pamphlets from institutions the ed is left off of certain verbs and so i'm thinking it's like to leave that off of words means they don't realize that there's been a process that went on like if somebody reached for something right and they just say he reached for the no they for the coffee they then that means they don't appreciate that process of beginning to read, you know, thinking about it, beginning to, and finally doing it, which is very Greek, right? The Greeks can capture in process things going on with their language. And so to leave that off. Sounds like ebonics or something. What? That sounds like ebonics or something. That's part of black language too, but it's other cultures too. And even just white guys in the modern era so going going Wait back minute, I'm oh. in the middle of this oh I thought you so, stopped um, so that has struck me that it's anyway, not just uh, leaving off ED but it's it's really a deep level of missing out on on movement reached, and process in life not even I did. Change. Not even I did reach. Just I reach. I reach for the guy. Meaning I reached. Hey, wait a minute. It's not past ten. So what you're doing it now? Yeah, I mean those those trends. You know, those can that can be the beginning of a change. We but do you see. notice that in students, or do they ask about that? Why Why do you have to have an? I I I work with international students, so they're learning the language. Okay. That's very different from like a native speaker. If native speakers, once native speakers start developing these trends, yeah. then that's when we start, you know, seeing like a uh, step towards a change. Yeah, but I would like say it's more people natives. who are learning the language, though, like they're gonna make those kinds of mistakes, of course. But it's when the native, the native speakers, the authorities of the language, once the young generation or whatever generation begins to implement these kinds of changes, that's when we start to see an actual change developed within the, the or how about that word conversate like a lot of blacks do that like he and i were conversating that is <laughs> not like, a word mm -hmm. oh, i always wonder where did that come from but see like when we when you start talking about like uh the it's african american vernacular it's a gimmick yeah. word. which is like i don't like to use ebonics because that has a negative connotation it's a language and it should be respected as a language you know bill gilbert says it's not a it's a non-standard, non substandard Yeah, it's a non-standard non language, of course, language. but it's still a language, you know? Yeah. But, like, Ebonics has this kind of negative connotation. I, but be, you, be, he, be. Yeah, this, the vernacular, though... Actually, it's uh, pure subjunctive, but that's another problem. You really don't hear that much anymore. I, be, you, be, he, be. Yeah. That's um, true. Yeah, I mean... That's then a we, caricature. Th this, this whole, like, standardizing the language, too, you know? Mm -hmm. That's, like, a... Uh, thing that some people don't like, like the pure linguists, like in the field, like they think this standardization of a language is a way to show like the elite group has standardized the language. Now you have to speak like the elite or else now your dialect is going to be subordinated. Like your, uh, you know, whatever your minority group is. So, so it becomes a class just, issue. Yeah, yeah, and to say like one is more correct than another, like language is just language. If I say we uh, we were conversating, you understand what I was saying. Yeah. yeah, we were talking. Like I don't need to explain, although you might see it as like, well, you would probably say conversing rather than conversating, you know? But like the meaning is still 
you know, captured there. But now it becomes an issue of, you know, what's more correct or what's, you know, closer to the standard of the elite. Because, you know, when people think African, African-American vernacular, uh, people usually don't, don't think of it as like a language. They say, oh, yeah, it's this dialect. They don't know. They're illiterate. They don't know how to speak good English. It's just like, that's a language. Language is language. Well, from a linguist perspective, from a linguist point of view. So, you know. Well, I have a premise. <laughs> that English is the, the best language extent for the pursuit of philosophy. Mm-hmm. And here's why. It's, it remains active, productive, and versatile. What do I mean by that? It transcends, or can and does transcend, current religious, social, ethical, uh, political, and regional mm-hmm. con- con- uh, confinations, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, boundaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, and confinements. Uh, it can go transcend any cultural limits uh, it has such a broad store, a uh, uh, broad international, multi and cross uh, cultural store of roots, extensions of meanings, idioms, parallel uses, parallel vocabularies, uh, and and thus, uh, if you can understand the significance of its history, vocabulary, and culture, English is the very best language for the pursuit of philosophy. Because because it it's not like Koine Greek would be stuck in a in a on a little island somewhere where people are confined and tribally bound to to follow certain ethical and cultural so it's not going to grow. Whereas for some reason America, even Britain, maybe to some degree has you know confinement to it. But uh, but America, it's like. Everywhere you go, you have to reach out to express yourself beyond all those smaller tribal ethical things in which most languages, you know, including Hellenic, which was an amazing culture. So anyway, that's my... Yeah, I I, I do agree with you. If if you can, if you can answer that, huh? Why does it do that question? And that involves really appreciating the history. The history, absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. English has a, a, a brilliant history. Yeah. To quote Harry Potter. Who's Brit? And is, Sorry. It, is it possible that... Sorry, right, maybe no. like one of the reasons Sorry. why it's so Sorry. It, yes. it manages to do all these things is because of, in fact, the inconsistencies that came from a... a Old French, old German. It's got all that. And so you get all these inconsistencies because of the clash of that, that syncretism. Yeah. Nordic. But it also took the best of each of those to accomplish Well, some and of if you look at a dictionary, 75% of the words are either Latin or Greek, an English dictionary, mm-hmm. with slurring of mm-hmm. consonants and vowels. Mm-hmm. You know, for regional pronunciation and for articulatory phonetics and things like that, because of the Renaissance, because of the Renaissance, we got the Greek and Latin back. Yeah. yeah. After developing um, a, a whole set of parallel terms, we had Greek, Latin. No, we had French, Latin, and German for for fourteen hundred years on the British Isles, French, Latin, and German. French, Latin, and German. The French would take the crown. The Romans would come back and and do another religious sweep. Uh, The Germans would come back in again with different dialects. Uh, um, And then it would go to uh, Parisian French because now it's uh, very cool to be after the, you know, the Henry V took the crown back, then everybody wanted to go back to Paris because they liked, you know, so then we had the Parisian, and then we had, but Parisian was, was, is French, it's a Latin-based language, so everything from France is going to have Latin roots, so you're going to get parallel Latin and French, you're going to get a parallel German and French, you're going to get parallel German and Latin, the courts had to be both in Latin and, no, in French and in, in, in Old English, 
for 300 years, so the entire legal vocabulary is a set of parallel words like house and hold, um, will and testament, uh, uh, right, right and law. <coughs> there's, there's this whole, and so it has this great, you know, <clears throat> it's like this huge stack of things that you could do anything with and then you send it to America where there's a bunch of outlaws and there are no, you know, tribal <laughs> limits like in try and step out of the family in an old Greek town, you know, or an old Italian town or even a French town. You're, you, you, you're stuck within those cultural mm -hmm. and regional um, boundaries. America doesn't have that. So American English is allowed to say anything it wants. I would like to uh, raise... Uh, In the speech. Uh, suppose we could identify a particular work that would be essential for man to understand and communicate. Okay. And let us assume now it is written in such a style that it escapes all ambiguities and it's clear and precise and it makes the essential points in a developmental way and comes to a conclusion bringing together all into unity. And let's agree that that kind of writing is essential for man to know himself. And you bring it into a class like your class. And you say, you know what I would like each of you to do is to translate this into your own languages, each of your different languages. And let's see which language is able to capture it and to what degree they're able to capture it. So that then we can talk about what's the best language to study. Right. And what you need in English, if it turns out to be English, what kind of a grammar do you need in order to be able to utilize that and understand it on the various levels of which it contains, right? And then point out that, by the way, if you don't have such a grammatical background, you're not going to be able to translate it even in, in English from that statement in your own personal statement unless you're able to follow certain kinds of structural points and, emphasis, right? analogies, and on the one hand and the other, and all the rest of them. If there were such a, what would you point to as the ideal piece of writing that we could use for this experiment? Or? How about a platonic dialogue? In English already? Would you do that? It's, uh, it's likely that a platonic dialogue would have. Take a symposium or something. Yeah. Something that's not. We'll just die out of a speech, Brian. But the problem, Pierre, um, <clears throat> if I'm if I'm taking the conversation down, there's going to be some people that are going to find it from a pragmatic perspective. I have a question about your experiment, <clears throat> which is even just from the Attic Greek to. English in the last two, three hundred years, we have several translations of any given dialogue just in that one language, English, and multiple interpreters. Yeah, we would grade each of the interpreters. Yes. But as we've seen often, sometimes an interpreter does well in one area and not so well in another. It's not so clear cut. We would fire that person. <laughs> What, do the interpreter or the judge? The interpreter would say, you run hot and cold. Why is it that you gave up your art? <laughs> um. How is it possible that you can have hits and misses in the same game, sir? So then, but then it becomes an issue of the interpreter, not the language. But the original question was about yeah. The language, right? Yeah. So now we already have a problem of dealing with interpreters within one language, say English, 
now we look at Spanish and Thai and Russian. In, the, in other words, the and same the same test can be applied to to translators who know the same language, mm -hmm. English translating at work. Yes, that's true. So when so it would become an incredibly complex that's problem right. though across all these mm -hmm. languages to really do such a thing, would it not? I mean, because for instance, those of us who are sitting around going. Okay, which of these is the best? Would we have to know all five or all ten languages ourselves? Well, we thank goodness we could all, we could simply shoot that over to someone who has that expertise and wait for their judgment. Someone who knows all those languages? Sure. Do they have to be? Um, But we can now give First them a test. Mechanism? We can now give them a test, you see, based upon the original form and see how well they understand it in their own language. But to do so, we have to communicate with them in some language. Given the fact that we have the statement and we give it to people who now can translate that in their own language and give them a test, not on the basis of what they have written, but how well they come to understand the original document. Now we can ha now grade them, can we not? And we might be able to conclude, be careful, that it's your understanding of your own language that either allows you to be successful in this or not, and the degree to which you're not successful, we can give you a grade. Yeah. But how can we conclude that when even within our own language of English, which more or less we share, um, we have varying degrees of understanding even in this group right now on any given dialogue? Is that... Not so much. Is that... That variability is not Is that the owed case. to the language or to no, no. simply how much no. time we've spent in a dialogue? No. All you need to do is know whether or not there's someone who can make the claim they understand that work to the degree which they can be a judge, that's all. So just take the best, the idea. Of course. Sounds like we're back at the beginning of the dialogue last night. Yeah, I was thinking that the language that Pierre uses to talk yeah. about yeah. ideas would be a good example of the of a text that he want if you want to pick one, where he has been able to uh, take the Plato and the works that he's written and put it into very excellent English in such a way that, well, I, I think that's what's being said, but I'm just totally amazed sometimes at the paragraphs that he unfolds about an idea, and it's clear. Like, I'd like to have seen that as clear in Plato. <laughs> when we look at like the thing hey, went for another thirty years. Yeah, when it may be the, there. Take but another look. <laughs> it may be there, but it's nice to see it unfolded in such a way that uh, I didn't see it, but it's there. I agree with you there, but it's difficult sometimes to capture it, and maybe it's the translation. Mm -hmm. Like when uh, when Nabuya and I were working on like the Parmenides, Ion, and the different dialogues we spent time on, we would look at the Greek and then come up with our translation, and then we'd come we bring out three or four translations, and I look at that one part and see okay what this guy did, what this guy did, and now we were looking at our own, and now we're looking at three other ones, and trying to make the judgment. And so when you, we said, yeah, we do this, even when it, within the group when we're looking at, it, you know, whatever it is that we're reading, we have a couple people with different translations. Okay, what does the what does the Jawad say? Or what does what does the Rao say? Mm -hmm. What does the Thomas Taylor say? What does the Loeb say? But now us, like, how do we make that judgment? Which one is the best, or which one is better? Why is this one better than the other one? Like, why is yours better than? Yours? Yeah, like why why is the Loeb? better than the rouser. Yeah, but can, uh -huh. can you answer it? No, well, I mean, we often do. No, no, uh, yeah, but are, are there not standards you can apply? Yeah. And then say this is better because it represents this, that, and the other one lacks it? Yeah. Sure. 
without taking away from it and without adding anything yeah. to it. Yeah. I think is the the, the standard. Have you read any well, Spanish well, translations of symposium? Not the symposium, but I do have a collection of dialogues uh, in Spanish that were translated directly from the Greek. Okay, because all the lobes are in Spanish. You see on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. With wow. the with the Greek and the Spanish. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. But actually, oh, I don't want to hijack her. No, I hijacked you. <laughs> so. Okay. How, how does the Spanish to... translation of the Parmenides work? I I haven't looked at that. Um, I haven't looked at the Parmenides in Spanish okay. yet. We uh, we were doing the one on language. What was the name? Cratylus. The Cratylus. Oh, yeah. And I read that. The Cratylus. Yeah. Good. Nabuya and I started working on that one, and then I picked up this translation that's in Spanish from the Greek, and I started reading that, and um, wow, it's good, but some of the some of the tra the way that the that it's translated just doesn't really capture like we do like with and the, if you can put that difference in words you would then have a beautiful article oh yeah mm. right if you want to teach philosophy at the Mexican Cultural Center in Santa Ana there's yeah, a place yeah, for you, yeah, yeah. and they have a radio station if you want to do a program. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know if I'm ready for that, but... Okay, yeah, it's something, or in it's English, something. you could do a radio program in English where you call, people call in and say, Well, I believe I have a on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wanted to jump back uh, just uh, to the previous point about you are in Nobuya working through not only your own translations, but previous ones, comparing them all together. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that that's an activity um, that I'm very familiar with from my background as a kid. I, I, grew, I grew up in a Jewish family, and uh, we have uh, the Talmud, which is uh, an encyclopedic collection of uh, rabbinical discussions of the Old Testament, and uh, what commandments from God could mean or not mean, and, you know, uh, a lot of very difficult discussions as they hashed it out, but they recorded these discussions, uh, you know, all, all the best rabbis trying to figure out some of these uh, very difficult commandments and how should we live our lives, right, and they recorded all of this, and then even to this day, what, uh, uh, what rabbis do in yeshiva and in, in university is to essentially uh, memorize these discussions or at least be familiar with them almost like a lawyer would on any given topic so that uh, they've been through all the ins and outs of a particular issue they can take it further if they like but they know the basics on each one because they've studied this Talmud but the Talmud itself was not put together by any one rabbi but by a, con a consensus process a Socratic discussion um, among uh, the best rabbis at the time, and then carried nomadically, uh, you know, around the Middle East, and actually diverged into two versions, slightly, slightly different. So, with that as a background, um, it seems to me that what you and Nobuya were doing is beautiful, and I wonder um, why there is not such a similar thing. Platonic tradition, uh, unless you could call it Proclus, who some people argue doesn't really add anything himself. He's just he's just recording a long line of uh, Greek thought, and he essentially represents a Talmudic consensus among many Platonic thinkers. Um, but are or maybe I'm just ignorant of it. Are there mm -hmm. are there any uh, Platonic sort of works where you say you got six guys because you can sit around with six That's people. And where one person sees something, the others the others go, oh yeah, that's a much better explanation than any of us had thought. And then two minutes later, you, you're you're a paragraph down or two sentences down, and the other person across the table has a much better insight into it. And when you when you take this the the sum of all of those, what you get is the best of all six people sitting around the table, 
-hmm. Everybody hashing it out. It's not any one person. But isn't that the problem of the Do Talmud? Do we have that in the Is that the problem? Does anything like that exist where it's been hashed but, out but by that's, a group? But that's people? the problem of the Talmud. Oh, good. Well, how so? Well, it's already been hashed out and codified and solidified. Can you redefine Talmudic law? Is there any discussion in the Jewish culture that takes the Talmud and re revises it? Yeah. Can it be revised? My understanding, and actually, um, Kayan Poltok writes a really good book about this called The Chosen. And it's a fiction, but it, it, the core of the book points to this problem is that uh, essentially the answer to your question is no, there is no dialogue. That's you right. memorize it, and if you go outside and come, if you go outside that box, it's essentially a cultural so what you Because what, what you're really citing is, is um, law and precedent. And this is and, the and that, yeah, it sounds like a, a system of, of, of rules and precedents, which are non-viable. Okay, so I, I like that notion. It's a, it's a good point, but I guess my question then following that thing would be, why does consensual discussion of something in a Talmudic way necessarily necessarily lead to uh, the problem that you're talking about? For instance, just because a bunch of six of us get together and come up with the best total insight we can, that doesn't necessarily, and we, and we write it down for future generations, it doesn't necessarily lock us in. It's just a starting place. Why? Well, why, why, why is there a tradition? Dis generation disagree with that. You know, actually, these guys weren't so great in this one area. You know, Are you asking about the Jewish tradition? No, I'm actually uh, I'm actually asking about any tradition. If we're done in the Platonic tradition, if it's done in Jewish, anywhere, why does uh, I don't see why the problem that uh, you're describing in the Jewish tradition, the Talmud, where it has to be memorized and this is it, necessarily follows from the fact that they created the Talmud. Uh, that's a separate thing. Well, it's, it's, I'm not saying anything profound. I'm saying it's an established book of laws that has been brought together by consensus, and that's it. We don't have to go any further. I think the consensus and makes it, I think, a little bit more authoritative. And it sounds, it sounds, no, it doesn't make it. It sounds authoritative it sounds because authoritative. we have all these old rabbis who have come to an agreement. But I think it, it, it. Um, well, what's important is well, it actually solidifies it and makes it. Um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, institutionalizes it. There's it it no definitely does. Although I want to, I want to clarify one thing. They don't necessarily come to agreements in the Talmud. Um, well, that must be fun. There's a, there's a lot. <laughs> I of, found a spot where we can argue about this thing finally. They do. <laughs> they do. There's a lot. And it in took there a lot them. of toothpicks to separate it out. I mean, and that's, that's actually a, that's a large point. Uh, that's that's really the large, uh, you know, uh, the thrust of it is that many of the things they don't come to a conclusion on, but they hash it out in, from all sides. And you're supposed to be familiar with that. You know, I think the idea that you're proceeding with is very good for things like law. Yeah. Law. Yeah. But not for creative not for thought. Ideas. Not for creative thought? Because you're really are you not talking about what is language? Is, does language represent something or is it in itself the reference and the thing that must be studied? Some languages are able to capture certain aspects of reality and put it in sounds, which other people then tr translate the sound into a word and write it out. But what is language? It's, it's a metaphor for something. It represents something. It is not a, it, it has its own intelligibility, but it, nonetheless, its final test is whether it represents something and whether it can represent something with great accuracy. And it's generative. And the real problem is whether or not, therefore, when you get people to look at a language, whether it's Greek or any other language, 
you want to get people who have a sensitivity towards that crisis that, that is inherent in every problem of translation, which is, can you get an insight in that to which it refers? Right. And can you, when you then translate it, look at the word and understand what it refers to and perhaps then create something that allows you to gain greater precision into the very issue that was originally represented in sounds and words. So that when you get all of these people together who are well versed in various things, uh, look for the guy who knows that to which it refers. Yeah. And listen to him because he's the one who's going to be able to do it if he has the expertise to translate it into his own language right. and to represent it with great precision. Well, but okay, so but here's my point is that... Which was, um, I was thinking... Is that, that in any given text, the guy who knows to that which a particular phrase or sentence refers may be Regina on this sentence, and it may be Pierre on the next sentence, and it may be Steve on the third sentence, it may be different people for different parts of the text. That's, that's not the point. Go ahead. So I'm just, so all I was saying is, uh, unless I'm missing the basic thrust See, of your point, why not get a group of people together who are all very no, good, no, but no, none of them has the complete it, why picture? Not, why not get a group of seers who are all trying to express the same vision? and then take a look at the way they describe that vision and the way in which they're able to formulate a language to express the essence of what it is they see. Yep. Are these, that's are that's these, the real test of language. Are these seers, in this experiment, are these seers describing the same vision or different visions? Is it a of course, the same vision? thing. Hopefully the same. the same. Of course, the same thing. Because there is a reality to which all of this refers, and that is not variable. But it allows a hierarchy of ways of, of grasping it and expressing it. And in that sense, that's why I... And, they, and these seers would be coming from the same language using the same language, like all three seers, all all using English to talk? It wouldn't make any difference. Sure. And then I guess I'm that's, why, that's why we all praise certain poets. Why? They're able to grasp something, not just language but they're able to utilize language to capture the vision that's behind the language to which the language points to. Capturing and communicating. And then in some way, hopefully, in translating, it bring the person to see the same thing. To the degree that they're able to do it, yes. Well, I guess I'm just wondering if you that's kind of the point behind the quote in about the new seminar, the Ji Ming Chen quote about platonic vision and yeah. right yeah. having the same thing before them. I can't remember the quote right now. David might be able to. Ji Ming Chen comes from. He's speaking to which tradition here? Taoism. Taoism. Yeah. So that first quote on the flyer yeah. for the seminar mm -hmm. said that because Ji Ming Chen could see that that was a platonic vision, and Pierre could see that Taoism was a platonic... Yeah. Is that letter, right? Anyway, the Taoism yeah. is platonic, and Ji Ming yeah. Shen could see that Pl Plato was Taoist, or whatever, yeah. a single reality, a single truth. Mm -hmm. Single and I think vision. And, and therefore, I think that for... I, well, I think that I mentioned it earlier, and I think that the, pl the destiny of man is a, a beginning, a good representation of translating uh, or exploring ideas and using the English language in an excellent way mm -hmm. and capturing ideas, describing ideas in such a way that it's they're intelligible and making reference to Plato and other 
systems and bringing them into the discussion. And I, in reading the dialogue, it struck me that, and in this discussion, that it struck me that that would be a, a, an excellent example, if we're looking for examples, where you see Pierre's vision coming through and pulling these pieces of work and putting in such a way and capturing the ideas through the English language. Want to share a quote? If that's, uh, if that's the gist of this discussion. So what's the difference between and I don't, yeah, what, we're do, what we're going to be doing? There's a text we're going to pass around. It's Barbara's dream. Right. How do you get to the meaning? Same, same issue. How do you get to the meaning of a dream? Through careful understanding of the words and paying must, attention to... Must you, must you also know that to which it refers? Yeah, that helps a lot. This makes me think of why Joseph asks if you interpret. <laughs> right. Hmm. Yeah, this is, the, this is the, uh, the first part of the dialogue. And many right? people can give their, give their analysis of the dream. Is it likely that they might all agree that one is superior to the other? Mm -hmm. How do they make that judgment? They must in some way perceive that it's pointing to something and someone can grasp it better than the others. Of course. I think and that's not, they, just, that's not just the words. Of course. Nope. I think the way that they make that judgment is like what that suppose one person offers one explanation of part of the text and another person in the group offers another explanation for it does uh, it work that way if uh, the the uh, the explanation of those two the explanation which has <clears throat> more unity more wholeness more answers more questions, sheds more light, integrates more with the rest of uh, the text itself and or with her life. Um, and her pieces. life, and her life. And her life. That's an interesting part. That's not in the text. That's mm. not in the text. But, but that could be drawn be, from the text. That can be drawn from, yes. And may illuminate parts exactly. of it that are not otherwise seen as insignificant. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just answering your question: yeah. is that the way that everybody comes to that consensus uh, on any given part of the text, or even the entirety of the text, is um, through um, a discussion of which explanations, which possible interpret. I don't want to use the word interpretations, but uh, answer the most, have the most unity, integrate the most with the other parts. Uh, have a wholeness. I would say that the unity, though, must go back to the, the dreamer so that they can see more than they would have seen without the analysis. So it's it moves from the That's content right, of the analysis and words and back to the dreamer and their world to see whether or not that makes a, a has, significant difference. And it has meaning for them. Yeah. And brings about Lucia. But to have it? The two dreams. Yeah. 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 Well, let's have at it. Sure. Have you a little fun. I'm up for it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I brought about Thank 11, you. so then we're only about you. 9. So we should wow. go. Well, those are two dreams. We don't have to do both. Today is Saturday, the 28th. So, Friday, the 27th. Well, whatever. I'm not good with dates. You can always rely on that thing. Okay. Today is the last day of the month. Look, look at my face at the person who cares. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. The lunar month. Yeah, yeah. I'm so a bad about it. Style month, they used to call it. Okay. Make a pick. Which one? Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I'd like to see Saturday mornings. It's good. Saturday morning. It what is. Do you think? Yeah. It is the second one on the page. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Actually, I don't know. I, I do. How did you know? The man is insightful. See that? Toss up, you know? <laughs>
<laughs> I said, shove it. Is it, is it. Passing out pen? He, he gave me a pen. I said, how, how did he come to that? He was so insightful to know I needed a pen. <laughs> okay. Shall I read it or? Oh, I think that'd be fine. Okay. There's some kind of a party, sunny, a beach party, a lot of light. Um, I borrowed a tape recorder from the Gilberts and I have a microphone set up to it. I've supplied <laughs> all the food for the party. People are having a good time, but basically they're just, what do I want to say? I've cooked and bought things. They're having a good time, but they're not really appreciate. <laughs> this is so me, my pathologos. They're not really appreciate appreciating that I went to a lot of wo work to set up the party. And I'm at the point where I'm kind of noticing that. And I see Bill Ugalis, who looks really good. Healthy and good looking and young. <laughs> Some of you guys are gonna see this 45. <laughs> healthy, good looking, young, 45. <laughs> well, the healthy, oh, well. good looking and young is And Ingmar just turned 40. Facebook party. Yes. There's a party on Facebook? Well, Facebook. Well, Always a Ingmar, party he just announced that he, he yesterday he turned 40. Yeah. Okay, good. So Keep going. I said happy birthday. That's where the party is. It's a beautiful day. It's, okay, oh, it's something fun. like that. And he comes to the party. And it's a beautiful day. And a lot of Pierre's old students are there. I, and this, is a, this is a meta comment from outside. <coughs> I, mean, I don't remember seeing Pierre in the party. Also, Chance Dubois comes to the party. And I say hello to him and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and he's, he's out in the party and he comes up and he asks me, do I have a tape recorder? And I say, I don't know. These are not my machines, more or less is what I'm saying to him. And I just <coughs> to the machines that are set up. There's the machine of Bill and Rhonda's, which is like a boom box. And there's another smaller boom box. And they're connected with wires. And there's a huge, a large microphone. And he's looking at all of them, kind of considering the possibilities. Um, the scene shifts, and there's a woman who is bemoaning the fact. I don't know if she's at the party. It could be another environment, which means I needed more coffee before I should have recorded this. It seems like she's walking on the pavement or street. And she's saying to me that she is... Uh, well, I think it's by Im implication that she's a homosexual. She's a brunette dressed in red, and she's talking about the fact that a man wants to marry her, but she wants to maintain a non-physical relation. No, let's see. But wants to, okay, no, it's the man. She's talking about the fact that a man wants to marry her, but wants to maintain a non-physical relationship. Mm. She doesn't say that. She says that despite the fact that she's a lesbian, she would like some affection. She gestures like she would like to have her hand held or a little bit of touching. She says, I just want to be what I am. And as she says that, I'm listening to her. She's talking to me about the problem that she has. And I'm thinking, and I don't know if this is exactly in the dream or whether it's a reflection, a meta reflection, but it's not an after reflection, that that would be a good song to sing, a good song to write, and that it would be very popular. Additionally to the dream, meaning I turned it off and then turned it on, is the fact that the song seems like it, I don't say this to the person, but that it would be a beautiful, very blues, very sad, and that it would be very popular with people. I'm thinking more about the genre or the emotional level of the song. So I wanted to go out and write a song, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's a very weird dream. No. no? Yeah, part for the course. <laughs> They're all weird, aren't they? Mine are. They That's will. dreams. It's so entertaining, I forgot to pay attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. Well, and the party was so much fun. I mean, people were, I, I was watching the party. People were having a great time. Sunny, and they look like, you know how beach parties are when they're really going good and it's yep. just right? That was the kind of party it was. Because it, I mean, it was not too hot, it was cool, and it was like, the energy was super high and playful. And here I'm going, nobody's appreciating the fact. <laughs> I bought all the food for the party. Arr. 
That's so me. That's funny, Barbara. My path of logos. <sighs> Even Billy Gallows looks good. Isn't he? He looks very good in the drink. Both beautifully mm. shaped beard okay. and high, you know, good energy. Not, you know how he made that transformation, but I've never seen him since I heard that he did it, which is the transformation from all crouched over and wizened and kind of seedy looking to well, Superman. Oh yeah, he got out into a relationship with a nurse. There we go. And apparently she, she got him into getting a, an operation uh, one of those lens operations yeah. and then he took up mountain climbing with her and just turned into a buff you know and plus there was the turnaround of him watching himself teach a class at for his student teaching you remember yeah. and when he saw how he looked like the hunchback of Notre Dame those may not have been his words teaching he, he saw that he had to do something else you know he was almost legally blind so and then he got this eye operation okay. and it turned about about and then he didn't want to divorce from her, and she got cancer, and he divorced her anyway, but she died. Yeah, sad story. You know, cancer is a divorce. But then he got a huge well, amount, to do a he got a huge amount of money yeah. from his brother. And and apparently millions of dollars or something from the death of his oh, brother, yeah, uncle, yeah, somebody. Yeah. Somebody in his family died and left him big property, big money. He's still teaching modern philosophy, though, which means he truly lacks insight as opposed <laughs> to just marginal. But anyway, and then there's... Daryl Chance to bow. Yeah, I know another another yeah. luminary. He was, he was writing. About, he was writing about David Hume somewhere. D David Hume. And whom he didn't want to teach at all. He hated it. So what oh. do you make of the dream? He took it because he could take a dream. <laughs> I'm going to wait for Pierre's question and then I'll answer. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I want him to hear oh, you as well. Been stalling, he's not listening. Mm. What a trick. He, well, look, does it look like he's listening? I'm trying or to. Or shall I just ignore that fact and answer Julie's question? And okay. He won't hear her answer, my answer or her question. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> save that part. Let's save that part. Hold on to your question. Okay. I love this girl. <sighs> All right. You hang out more, sir. <laughs> and the thing about it is, you know, you might think it's kind of weird that it says, I have, I borrowed a tape recorder. And then he says, do you, do you have a tape recorder? And I say, I don't know. And that's because they are boom boxes. And the microphone is not for recording. It's for speak announcing. You know, so I literally don't know if they'll take a recording from that. In the dream, anyway, I'm like, I don't know. Not my recorder. Not my circus, not my monkeys. I think they will. Did you just think that up? But it says I've borrowed a tape recorder and I have a microphone set up to it. Uh-huh. I think you okay. can set microphones up to boom boxes and they they announce that, don't they? See, if the answer is no, then you understand my problem. Yeah, I guess that's what I am missing. Because you're saying I have a microphone set up to the tape recorder. Yeah, but it's a boom box. It isn't a tape recorder. The actual object in the dream, as you get down to where, I, where, I'm, where he's looking at it, the objects in the dream, I can see them when I'm making that statement. Even though I say tape recorder, it's, it's not a tape recorder. If you mean by that, something like this. It's not a tape recorder. And his question, I think he wants to record music. You know, he wants a chance to go. I think he wants to record music. And so then I'm really like baffled. Will it, this microphone it'll just call it boom make, box. Call it, I'm, I'm mixing make it a good right. recording of the music on this boom box? Because it's a, for me, it's a player. It isn't a recorder. So you have two questions. Does it record at all? And if it does record, will it do a good recording of the music? Well, those, yeah, and those I don't, I don't even bother to concern myself with because it's Chance who wants to know that, right? And he has the expertise. He's going to look into it. So I'm just saying, I don't know. So at least that's the way I understand that. So um, the first paragraph, um, could you tell me uh, what you're experiencing when you have the sentence, and I'm at the point where I'm kind of noticing that. <laughs> you want to know? I'm sorry, what? Because this is so me, Pierre. This is my pathologos, I think. 
and, and so, and you want to know what is it? Okay, you want my state of mind. It read, seems a little funny to me. No. Or, you want to know what I'm experiencing no. when I say, when I'm at the point where I'm kind of noticing that? Yeah. Well, I'm noticing that they're having a good time and they are paying no attention to the origin <laughs> of the party. I agree. That's not the sentence. Well, what no. the, that is that I'm noticing is that they're not appreciating. Pardon me. I'm at the point. Uh-huh. Because right. prior to this, I was just describing. Where I'm kind of, kind of noticing. Uh-huh. What you see in that language? Well, part of me would like to just say they're having a good time and that's enough. So I'm in a divided state about it. Part of me, part of, you know, it's like, hey, I'm recognizing they're having a wonderful hey, time. It's me, Barbara. Part of me says, it's me, Barbara. That I'd like them no. to notice that I, that, um, I set it all up. And that sometimes people will say, thank you very much, or whatever. This is a great party. Thank you. You know, but that isn't what's going on. Yeah, see. Um, well, it's kind of like maybe that it's been a, a long, uh, the party's been going for a while, and everybody's having a splendid time, and and I'm enjoying that they're having a splendid time up to a point, and then it's like, it's like, hmm, nobody knows that I'm behind this. Could you stop doing that, please? Okay. No. Does that expression therefore mean that it's, it's not a vivid state, it's a kind of seeing? Right. See, it's I'm kind of state. noticing that. Right. It's a more peripheral. It, yeah. It's not yeah. completely taking me over. Yeah. So therefore that modifies the preceding sentence, doesn't it? Right. Right. So therefore, it's functioning, but on a lesser level. Lesser level. Ah. Yeah, there might have been a time where I would have gone over the corner and sulked. About yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's right. So therefore, this is a, this is making a point about that. Ah. Is that right? Therefore, it's only there to a certain degree. What do you think of that? Well, it's an improvement. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm working my way through it. Yeah. So it's not that then, therefore, whatever problem you mention, uh -huh. it's making a comment about it, isn't it? That it's only... Like... Well, yes. It's, it's like a little black cloud floating through yeah. my consciousness. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's not complete. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. appreciating the party there. Yeah. 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 And it is the fact that I would just as soon figure out why I have this particular problem. Yeah. Yeah. The, the second paragraph. Um, what does it mean when, when you say, I don't know? Well, I was trying to explain that earlier, which was, um, even though I say that it's a tape recorder in the first paragraph, these are like, the one that I borrowed from the Gilberts yeah. is, lo is long, wide, tall, it plays tapes, and it plays CDs, and it plays radio stations, and I think of it as a music player. And the microphone is for making announcements, like when you want to say, all right, everybody, you know, and it'll, so I think of it as a speaker for the microphone and a music player. And I don't think of it as a tape recorder, even though I call it a tape recorder. The reason I ask that yeah. is because of the sentence that follows it. These are not my machines. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know what their capabilities are. Uh, then is, is that an explanation of I don't know? I think it is. Yeah. 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 And I was saying I kind of think of it as his problem. 
I, in the dream, I think he wants to record music that's going to be played live. And I think, well, I'm open, but it's not something I know about, so I'm not going to do anything with it. See, the, the language is interesting, isn't it? Uh, and I say, I don't know. These are not my machines. It's more or less is what I'm saying to him. Huh. Right. Does huh. that then modify? Yeah, it does. They're know. supposed to be <coughs> in the dream they're connected. <coughs> is that similar to what happened in the first paragraph? Hmm. A modifying of it? Yeah, it's a modification yeah. of... Uh, yes. So the same theme now appears in two paragraphs. Like a modification of... Yeah. Yeah, it's a modification. Mm, it's almost in the opposite direction, yeah. though. Okay, yeah. like the one is modifying. It's like a slight. What is that? Okay, the other modification was it was a slight negative to a, a positive background. Yeah. And yeah. here well, it's um, positive. Again, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. No. Is it? I mean, he can do it, but I don't like. I don't know the machines. Yeah. But finish it. I don't know. I don't know the machines. No. He no. can do it if he if yeah. the machines will do it. No. Yeah. Be my guest, kind yeah. of. Yeah. 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 It's not my problem. Not my problem. No. I. Yeah. I'm, and that's a change too. Right. Because usually I think anybody who has any problem is my problem. Right. You're giving yeah. it to him. Him. Yeah. Big shift. Big shift. Nice shift. Yeah. Because it's a similar in that way. It's a little similar to Julie's problem. Yeah. Or uh, Pamela's problem. Yeah. That you feel you have to be the servant yeah. of the universe. You know, or your particular universe. Which is more exclusive. So in the same way, the third paragraph. Um, yeah, there's a woman who's. Uh, what is this? She, she says, I just want to be what I am. <laughs> well, I'm listening to her. She's talking to me about the problem that she has. Uh-huh. Actually, I think there's almost. It's almost two modifications there because one is that the relationship the relationship would be of one kind. She wants it to be a modified no. from completely non-physical to physical in a way. And the second, but the second thing you're asking me about was, hmm, yeah, I'm not. I pull away from the problem that yeah. she has in the dream right. to Why? a degree. Um, in the dream. I don't know. Um, let me think. See, you notice you have that reflection. And I'm thinking, I don't know if this is exactly in the dream, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that it would make a good song. <laughs> that what she says, you know, would make a good song, a bluesy song about her But it's her a problem. But it's a problem, yes. That she wants to be completely who she is that she wants to be the person that she is. She doesn't want to be limited no. by being someone's definition of a lesbian. No. Or she doesn't want to be, she wants to be exactly, she wants to have, she wants to be what she is, meaning exactly what she is. It seemed kind of positive in the dream. But you, you express it as about the problem that she has. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that she's, that for her it's a problem because she wants this relationship to be of a certain kind and at the point where she that's not the relationship this guy is offering her but her reference is I I just want to be what I am yeah she wants to be able to reach out to him or and have him reach out to her she wants to have that need for affection fulfilled that's not really who she is. And you recognize that that's a problem. Huh. Yeah. Oh, what do you think of that? 
Well, right now I'm wondering. It seems like it's it's a it's not really her a problem with who she is, but a problem with the guy. I mean that she wants a relationship with this guy who doesn't want that kind of relationship. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I didn't necessarily see that in the dream. I just kind of. Is that curious? Yeah. 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 Hmm. Well, in a way. Like you're skipping. The skipping the problem. Is I'm him. skipping the problem. Oh shit! Well, and she's right, not. But not she. She's not expressing it. That's right. Correctly. Correctly, and that's her problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, that's her problem. If she expressed it correctly, she'd know what she has to, that she has to make a choice. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. Hmm. I don't know what to do with that though. Let's see that. Now, how does that pick up the same theme in the That's, other two? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there going, Arr! Let's see. Mm. I thought you had it on. Yeah. I'm doing all these monkey faces. Oh, well. Um, I can turn it off. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, it, 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 either way. You're much prettier. Oh, uh, you're very kind. <laughs> <sighs> he says that without even, you know, thank He means it. Um, <laughs> well, I was thinking she was the she was that. She's in a modified. She's an example of a modification, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She's and therefore she's uncomfortable due to that modification that mm -hmm. she identifies mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And she's actually, I think, saying that she is the modification, mm -hmm. which is what I was doing, saying I am the problem that I was manifesting, okay. even though. There was the greater, and in that there was it was only a, a lesser, yeah. much lesser, mm -hmm. in the party versus the ownership of the party. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, curious, isn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. same problem three ways. Yeah. Um, that's so interesting. Hmm. Just because I think it's very appropriate to where I am right now. Yeah. With a lot of things. Yeah, Especially like with the idea of changing my, of, of letting that that dream resurface, dream, that goal resurface. No, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Rather than do something else. Fun. Thank you. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Ah. You guys can trash these, give these to what me, whatever you done? prefer. I have no, I, I set them up on the okay. waves of the universe. Thank, Thank you, David. Right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Good saying hello again. Oh, yes. Pleasure. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. All right. Yes. There. Thank you, as always. There. Thank you. There. Oh, wait, wait. One more. There. Thank you so much. There. All right. There. Truly. Oh, hasta la vista, Pierre. What, that's uh, There's a handshake coming your way. You got to... Asta, what? Uh, oh, is this my pen? An asta. Hasta la vista. Yeah. Thank you. I can't see you again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, David. What's fun is, is when you get all the... Also, if you ever...